Hi, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Computer Science for Everyone. And in this video, we're going to be creating the store class. So let's go to our assignment here. And this assignment is telling you essentially what the DVD and store and controller classes have to contain. So for the DVD class, we agreed that we had to have three variables. These three here in the first um, box, a name, a price and a boolean, whether it is available or not. So these three are created up here, the name, the cost and the availability. Although they have different names, that's fine. And then some getters and setters. So the getters and setters are here. These are the getters and these are the setters, essentially. Although I've made it a bit more interesting by adding rent and return DVD instead of set available, which we could have done. Um, it's essentially the same thing. Now we have to move on to the store. So the store can do two things. It can list the DVDs that we've got for sale or for rent, and then it can rent a DVD. Renting a DVD is only possible if the DVD is available, of course. And when we rent it, we make it unavailable. And we increase the money in our account. So we have a list of DVDs, and we've just seen in the previous two videos, well, the the, uh, the array list videos, how the lists work. So we have a list of DVDs and then a double that is going to be the money. So we come to our store, which is here, and then we create these two things. So list DVD DVDs, and we're going to have to import this from Java Util. And then a double called money. So these are our two instance variables. Every store we create, every object, is going to have a list of DVDs that is going to be initially empty and a double for the money that is going to be initially equal to zero. Yeah, so this is what we've got. Um, then we're going to need a constructor. Although we're not going to initialize either of these variables with a value because the double is zero by default, the DVD needs to be an empty list. Right now, it is a null object. So, um, what we want to do is say DVDs equal to new array list DVD. And we have to, again, import this. So there we have it. Now our DVDs, instead of being null, is a new array list of DVDs. And the great thing about this is that it is empty and this will happen for every store we create. So it will happen upon creation, which means we're never going to have to deal with DVDs being null. DVDs is always going to be not null. It's always going to be a new array list, an empty array list, because we initialize it in the constructor, which is the first thing that gets run when we create a new object. So it's important to remember this. Okay, what else do we need? We need a way to list the DVDs, i.e. iterate through our array list and print the DVD names and whether they are available or not. Um, and then a way to rent a DVD. So let's create these two methods. Oh, spelling mistake. And this is going to be public void. A way to list the DVDs. And a way to rent the DVDs. I'm making this method a boolean, not because I fancy, but because this method is going to return true if we managed to rent a DVD successfully, and false if we didn't manage to rent it. So I'll explain what that means. For example, if the DVD is already unavailable, we will return false. If it's available and we manage to rent it, we'll return true. Things like that. Um, and of course, this rent DVD method is going to need the name of the DVD we're going to rent. Okay. Just as specified there, we're going to give it a string. Okay, so let's make the list DVDs method first. So we iterate through our list and we print the name, the price, and the availability of the DVD. So we create the iterator from our list, as we have seen before. Remember to import the java util.1, not 
and java.util1, not the swing text HTML, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then while we have a next item, then we um, like this, we assign the next item to be a DVD. And I've explained how this works in the uh, realist iterating through a realist video. At least I think so. Um, and then we do system dot out dot print ln dvd dot get name and then price yeah. you see I can't look at my keyboard while I'm recording because the microphone is right in front of my head so that's why I make spelling mistakes get cost and then okay so this is going to print the name of the DVD the cost and then whether it is available or not okay so that's it that's all we need to do for the list of DVDs we iterate through our list and then we print out the name, the cost, and the availability, and that's it. For the rent DVDs, however, it is a bit more interesting. We need to access our list and iterate through it, find a DVD that we want to rent, check if it's available or not. So we want to copy this But instead of printing, we want to check if dvd.getName is equal to the name that we get as a parameter. So if this name is equal to the dvd name, it means that we want to rent it. So if dvd is available, we rent, else we can't rent. Yeah, if the DVD is not available, we cannot rent it. If it is available, we rent it. So, how do we rent it? Well, first of all, we add an amount to the uh, account. and the amount we add is the cost of the DVD. Then we rent the DVD and what this does is set the availability of the DVD to false. And if it isn't available, I'm actually going to leave this here. If it isn't available, then we uh, say, well, we're not going to add any money we're not going to render DVD. The only thing we can do is say DVD is already taken. Sorry. And return false. At the very end of the method, we return true because if we haven't returned false, actually, we want to return false here as well. Um, and we want to return true here. Let me explain why. I was about to make a mistake, but fortunately I realized. So there are there's only one way in which this method can succeed, which is if we rent the DVD. If we add the money to our account and the DVD goes to the customer, we return true because we've succeeded at renting. If the DVD is already taken, it means that we are finding the DVD here. The DVD's name is equal to the name we've given it. We found a DVD in our list but it's not available, so we print DVD is already taken. Sorry, we return false. We failed at giving the customer a DVD. The other way we can fail is if the customer tries to get a DVD that is not in our list. This is never going to execute if the DVD is not in our list because the DVD's name is never going to be equal to the name that the customer wants. So the other thing we can print is
that the DVD is not in our list. And there we have our two methods, one to render the DVD that iterates through our DVD list, compares the name the customer wants, that is given as a parameter, to every name in our DVD list. If it's available, we rent it. If it's not, we cannot rent it and we say it's already taken. And if we don't find it in our list, we say the DVD is not in our list. And another method to list the DVDs in our list. Um, and we simply iterate through our list and print out the details of every DVD. So this is how we create the store class. Hopefully that was um, okay for you. Hopefully you, you did this correctly in the assignment. But if not, don't worry. This is a complicated assignment. And if you understand it fully, things will get better from now. Um, in the next um, video, we're going to be creating the controller class, which is going to start the program, run the menu for the user to interact with, and essentially control the whole application. So I'll see you in the next video.